We'd like to welcome you guys to the AFC podcast. We're getting ready to talk about that person that you see in the center of the screen right there. And he is the subject of a murder of a little girl and an abuser of many children inside his own home. He is the biological father. And this is just something that we, we cannot stand for, especially when fathers, we are battling for our rights and battling for our children. And this type of thing that this guy has been not only arrested for, but sentenced for, sets us all back as men. And we need to stand up and speak out against this. So a Henderson father was sentenced Thursday, this past Thursday, to life in prison for beating his three-year-old daughter by the name of Abigail Bennett. And I'm gonna put her picture on the screen. She only had two pictures of her. There were not very many pictures of this baby girl at all. This being one of them, but this one being a little bit of a better picture. This is really the only picture that I was able to find. If you guys have more pictures, you can feel free to send them, but I was not able to find them. So between this picture right there, which looks like she might have two black eyes, is really hard to tell. And that picture right there, Abigail is A-B-Y-G-A-I-L Bennett. She was three years old. And her father, by the name of Justin Tom Bennett, 26 years old, pled guilty to the murder and 31 counts of child abuse after prosecutors said that he tortured his three young daughters for about 18 months, leading to the death of a three-year-old girl by the name of Abigail Bennett, who is gonna be the primary subject in here because she is now posthumous. And that's according to court documents. Prosecutors initially sought the death penalty for that dude. Now, how many of you guys believe that he should have got the death penalty? Feel free to be honest, tell me your thoughts. And by the way, we're, we're gonna talk about the biological mother here in a moment. That's the biological mother that he's sitting next to in that family photo, why they look like a happy family. because she's not completely innocent in this either. But they sought the death penalty, but they made a plea deal with the father. Where was the deal for Abby, the girl's aunt, Carrie Anderson said, and asked the district judge, David Barker, before he handed down Justin Bennett's sentence. Why wasn't she given a way out? Where was her escape from the death penalty? Mm. In 36 hours leading up to Abigail's death, brace yourselves, guys. This little three-year-old girl suffered a broken back. A broken back. Three broken ribs and severe blunt force trauma where she was hit so hard in her chest with so much force in this three-year-old girl's little chest that it tore her right atrium of her heart by this asshole that y'all see on my screen. He punched this little girl so hard in the chest that it literally tore her heart. Justin Bennett's indictment details more abuse stating that Justin would hit and kick the girls. Wow. Hmm. He would throw them against a wall. He would force feed them hot foods, cover their mouths and plug their noses. And even in one instance, court documents state that Bennett sliced one girl's unhealed wound open. That's hard to read. And I'm gonna warn you guys for the people who are listening it's about to get a little bit worse, okay? Thank you for letting me know that the chat is not moving. Who was that? Love Dixon, thank you. So, so there we go, let me refresh this. Now, should be moving now. So I'm gonna warn you guys, if you're listening right now, how many people do we have listening as of this moment? I cannot see it. Let me pull it up so I can find out where we're at. And whenever you guys come in, if y'all would, do me a favor and click that thumbs up. It'll help share our stream. We've got 148 people watching. Our goal is always to try to get as many people here as possible. So if you guys would, click that thumbs up. We only got 110 thumbs up. Let's get 50 more people to commit to clicking that thumbs up. It'll help share this story because I believe that this little girl deserves somebody to hear her story. And there were two other girls that were involved in this story as well. Okay? So I want y'all to keep in mind there were three baby girls in this story. 
Laquisha Easters, uh, she joined the channel membership, and I want to say thank you very much, and welcome to the AFC, where we advocate for children first, and just understand our mission and goal is to always try to raise awareness for our babies. So everybody, welcome Laquisha Easter to the AFC, and thank you for joining the channel membership. And you guys always know, if I mispronounce your name, just let me know how to pronounce it. I'm not real good with pronouncing some of the names, but thank you, and, and thank you so much for joining the, the channel membership, okay? Now, here we go. Let's talk about some more of these details. When asked if he had anything to say before the sentencing, the biological father, Justin Bennett, said, this wasn't supposed to happen, and I'm sorry. That was how he explained this whole thing away. Justin Bennett will be eligible for parole after he serves 50 years in prison. So by this point, he will be 76 years old. Eligible for parole. Why does he even get an opportunity? Why does he get a crack at parole? I don't understand that. But he's also ordered to pay $5,000 in restitution to the state's Victims of Crime Fund. But that's pretty standard. Now, here's the details for the people who are wondering. An indictment fi uh, filed in the case has laid out a graphic detail. 18 months of torture Justin Bennett had allegedly inflicted upon his two oldest daughters, ages three and four. The youngest being three, which is Abigail. That's the baby that we're talking about in this story. And every picture I found of these kids were all, all had their faces blurred out for obvious reasons, but like I said, because this little girl is posthumous now, we were able to get her photo, which is this one right here. That's the little girl that passed away. Now, according to the document, the young father would kick and punch the two girls, throw them against the wall, force feed them mustard, and cover their mouths and noses as punishment for lying. The father, Justin Bennett, will also make baby Abigail and her older sister stand against walls. And if they fell down or cried from exhaustion, he would beat them. Keep in mind, these are three-year-olds and four-year-olds. He would also force feed them white habanero peppers. I'm sorry, I just get I just get lost in these stories sometimes. He would force feed them white habanero peppers. How does that count as a punishment? And why would you torture human beings like that? Like, how does your mind even think to work like that? These were so hot, it would cause the children to foam at the mouth, said the prosecutor. Jesus Christ, wow. The peppers were so hot that it would cause the girls to foam at the mouth. I have never even heard of that before. Hashtag, where was the biological mother in this situation? He's got three kids. Y'all see he was laid up in the bed with the mother. Where was she in this whole situation? Their eyes would be bleeding with tears and he would cover their mouths until they would swallow. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna read that again. These babies' eyes, their eyes would bleed with tears and he would cover their mouths until they would swallow this bullshit that he forced into their mouths. On one occasion, according to the indictment, Justin Bennett cut open a wound on the head of one of the girls that has not healed as punishment. <sighs> a prosecutor stated that in the days leading up to the beating death, little Abigail had her back broken and she suffered three fractured ribs. Lord have mercy. Bless this baby, man. Family members refused to say Justin Bennett's name in their testimony, 
referring to him as the defendant, and I don't blame him. Bernadine and Kenneth Morimoto, which you'll see in the photos here in a moment, Abigail's grandparents described the father, Justin Bennett, as manipulative and said that he sweet-talked his way out of a number of abuse investigations before the girl's death. Now, he threatened to kill his wife by the name of Corey, which is spelled K-O-R-I-E, Morimoto, M-O-R-I-M-O-T-O, -O, Morimoto. Y'all want to see the biological mother? That is the biological mother. That is Corey Morimoto. I don't know if she's Japanese. I don't give a fuck what she is. She is a shitty ass mother. That's what she is. What is her nationality? Shitty mom. Mm-hmm. That's what her nationality is. Shitty mom. She mom. <laughs> That's what her nationality is. She mom. Anyway, let me stop. Corey Cor Morimoto, the mother, also faced charges initially, but her charges got dropped. Y'all want to know why? She secretly filmed the biological father, Justin Bennett's abuse of the girls, and she turned over more than 20 videos to the police before Abigail's death. She was presented at the sentencing having enlisted in the Air Force, or excuse me, she wasn't present at the sentencing having enlisted in the Air Force. His other two daughters who were two and four at the time survived and they were placed in the grandparents' custody. The girls are still too young to articulate the abuse that they suffered and family members say it, but, uh, but testify detailed their lingering terror. Now I want you guys to hear this. The mom watched it happen. She videotaped it and she got off. She got off scot-free because she turned over the videos to convict him. Now, how in the hell does that work? Doesn't that actually make it worse? You're emailing uh, more pictures from the mom's page. Okay, thank you, Shaylin. Does that not make it worse, guys? You videotaped it, you watched it happen, you watched your daughters be murdered, and you don't do life in prison just because you told them like, hey, I got videotape of him actually doing it. So that means you allowed it to happen. You probably encouraged it to happen. Maybe even participating in it happening. But mom don't get a life sentence. Mom don't go to jail. Mom don't get parole in 50 years. Really? And y'all tell me that the system is fair? And people are asking, where was CPS in this? Okay, I have an answer for you. Here we go. Last year, the county reached a $100,000 settlement with Bernadine Morimoto, who was the grandmother, who claimed in a lawsuit that the county welfare officials botched the handling of their child protective services case by delegating it to a contractor who was only equipped to handle low priority cases. The two surviving girls are in therapy, Bernadine Morimoto said, and the oldest still wakes up screaming after nightmares about Justin Bennett and his mother, Corey. She said the girls still run and hide when they hear people at the front door and don't talk much about the abuse for fear that Justin Bennett or his mother, Corey Morimoto, will still punish them. The child abuse investigation revealed that Justin Bennett had forced mustard into his daughter's mouth when they lied and made them take cold showers as punishment. Henderson police wrote in a statement at the time of Bennett's arrest, but Child Protective Services found that there was no present or impending danger to the girls and recommended both parents take parenting classes. You wanna know how many parenting classes that they took? Justin Bennett, the biological father, completed one day of classes in April of 2016, less than three months before, April, uh, before Abigail's death. 
He took one class. And I try my best not to blame it on CPS because ultimately it was these two assholes fault. The reason why these children suffered the way that they did. And the reason why three-year-old Abigail is dead. It's their fault. Both of their fault. Let me put the, uh, the photo back. Let's go back. Make sure y'all take a mental image of those faces right there on my screen. They forced him to take one class. Isn't that something? Let's go ahead and get this fair use popping, man. And let's tell the story. Let's listen to the news stories. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. Somebody is asking where did this happen at? This happened, uh, let me see. It says Henderson. I'm not exactly sure where Henderson is. Let me see. Because it had the judge's name in here too. You guys will just have to Google search it. If somebody is able to find out where this case actually happened, just post it in the chat, okay? So that way I don't have to uh, stop the story. I can go ahead and continue to play the story. But we'll come back to that, I guess, at another point. But here we go. Here are the videos. information tonight on the three-year-old Henderson girl police say within hours of three-year-old Abigail's death police started investigating her father Justin Bennett after a doctor at St. Rose advised he is 100% certain that Abigail is a victim of child abuse and believes the abuse is what caused her death a medical examiner later said Abigail had a ruptured heart and other chest injuries saying she died from blunt chest trauma tied to an assault with chronic physical abuse Police say during his initial interview, Bennett told them he found Abigail with a blanket wrapped around her neck and not breathing. His parents, who were letting Bennett and three granddaughters stay with them while their mother is out of state for military training, told detectives Justin disciplines all three children like a drill instructor. Justin initially told police he didn't spank his daughters, but during a second interview, Justin admitted to using a wooden spoon to spank his children's bare butts. When pressed further about his daughter's death, Justin reportedly told detectives she had been screaming and crying for 10 minutes before he used his hand to cover her mouth with the report saying while using force he pressed against her mouth and back causing Abigail to stop screaming. Police also looked into a previous CPS investigation citing a report detailing his punishment for lying. The report indicated that Justin was forcing mustard in his daughter's mouth and using his hand to cover their mouth so they would be forced to swallow the mustard. That CPS investigation found there was no present or imminent danger to the children, but did recommend parenting classes. As for the arrest report, police don't say what they think Bennett did to cause his daughter's death. He's due back in court on Monday. Reporting live, Brian Callahan, 13 Action News. Here's the next video. A Henderson father will spend at least 50 years in prison after he was convicted of killing his three-year-old daughter. It happened back in 2016. Justin Bennett was sentenced to 50 years to life on 32 counts, including murder and child abuse. The coroner says his daughter Abigail had a ruptured heart and other chest injuries too. She died from blunt chest trauma tied to an assault with chronic physical abuse. New information tonight on the three-year-old Henderson girl police say was killed by her own father. The man you see right here, the police report is giving us a look inside a previous event. Let me back this up a little bit so y'all can hear this. I turned it up so. New information tonight on the three-year-old Henderson girl police say was killed by her own father. Matter of fact, I missed one. Let me say to Pinky. So Pinky Pink, if you are listening right now, I want to say thank you. And I missed that. I don't know why I missed that. But she joined the Children First Advocate, so thank you very much for joining the AFC. And give a shout out and welcome Pinky Pink in the chat. So whenever you guys see her, you know that is one of our new family members. So thank you so much to Pinky Pink in the building. Thank you for joining the channel membership. Father, the man you see right here, the police report is giving us a look inside a previous investigation by Child Protective Services. 13 Action News reporter Brian Callahan joins us live from Henderson with what he has learned. Yeah, that eight page arrest report details the CPS investigation that included an unusual form of punishment. The report also goes into the two different stories Justin Bennett told police before he was put behind bars here. 
Within hours of three-year-old Abigail's death, police started investigating her father, Justin Bennett, after a doctor at St. Rose advised he is 100% certain that Abigail is a victim of child abuse and believes the abuse is what caused her death. A medical examiner later said Abigail had a ruptured heart and other chest injuries, saying she died from blunt chest trauma tied to an assault with chronic physical abuse. Police say during his initial interview, Bennett told them he found Abigail with a blanket wrapped around her neck and not breathing. His parents, who were letting Bennett and three granddaughters stay with them while their mother is out of state for military training, told detectives Justin disciplines all three children like a drill instructor. Justin initially told police he didn't spank his daughters, but during a second interview, Justin admitted to using a wooden spoon to spank his children's bare butts. Now, I want you guys to catch that. The mom described it as she disciplined her children like a drill instructor. Really? Let me ask you guys a question. Do we have any military people in the chat? How about that? How about we start there? Do we have any military people in the chat? Y'all tell me if you have ever been through uh, what they call that, not drill, but uh, basic training. Have you ever been through basic training and they broke your back in basic training? Did they break your ribs in basic training? Did they make you take cold showers in basic training? Did you get slapped or excuse me? Did you get thrown against the wall and you get kicked and stomped in basic training? How about this? Did they take white habanero peppers and force them into your mouth and, and, and physically prevent you from being able to get it out your mouth until you swallowed it and it burned your mouth so bad that you started to foam at the mouth? Did they do any of that in basic training or in the military at all? Who actually got beat up? Who so is so have y'all ever heard of a case where somebody in the military, a drill instructor or anybody else has actually broken the back of an adult? Kicked them, beat them, shoved stuff inside of their mouth that is too hot for a human being to really be eating. They might make you run. They might yell at you. Maybe they might throw some water on you. Come on, man. Like how they try to describe that as parenting as, as, as a drill instructor. No, that's, that's not drill instructing at all. That's, that's abuse. And they murdered this girl. Let's keep going. When pressed further about his daughter's death, Justin reportedly told detectives she had been screaming and crying for 10 minutes before he used his hand to cover her mouth with the report saying while using force he pressed against her mouth and back causing Abigail to stop screaming. Police also looked into a previous CPS investigation citing a report detailing his punishment for lying. The report indicated that Justin was forcing mustard in his daughter's mouth and using his hand to cover their mouth so they would be forced to swallow the mustard. That CPS investigation found matter of fact, if somebody knows somebody who went through any of this stuff that these three girls went through, and if you were in the military, then y'all actually experienced a crime. Somebody, somebody committed a crime against you or your people. There's one thing like intense physical training. There's another thing called abuse or assault. That's the word I'm looking for. That's assault. There was no present or <clears throat> imminent danger to the children, but did recommend parenting classes. As for the arrest report, police don't say what they think Bennett did to cause his daughter's death. He's due back in court on Monday. Reporting live, Brian Callahan, 13 Action News. Gears now, a father has been arrested for his young daughter's murder, and now neighbors are shedding light on what it was like the moment the girl was taken from that house. 13 Action News reporter David Schumann has this tragic story from Henderson. No answer at the home of Justin Bennett here. The 23-year-old is arrested for killing his three-year-old daughter, Abigail. Now, neighbors across the street told us that they were in shock as they watched the little girl be carried away by police, the same little girl that they've seen play in the street out here so many times. It, it's very heartbreaking, you know. We were just hoping that the girl was okay, you know. 
I mean, they rushed it. They, they got him out of here as fast as they could. That neighbor says Bennett's wife is in the military and is currently out of state. The investigation revealed Abigail died of blunt force trauma to the chest. Neighbors saw Henderson police interviewing Bennett for a long time after his daughter was taken away. He was arrested the next day. Well, he went to school with my daughter, but a uh, uh, long time ago, and, and uh, that's all we know about him. But he was a nice guy. Abigail's two siblings were home when this all happened. Those children are now staying with their grandparents. Near Windmill and Pecos, David Schumann, 13 Action News. New information tonight on the death of a Henderson three-year-old. Her father is in jail for her murder. 13 Action News reporter Brian Callahan has a look at how police say the little girl died. And we do have to warn you, some of these details are disturbing. According to the arrest report, Justin Bennett told police he put his hand over his daughter's mouth to stop her from screaming and crying. When asked if he thought that's what a good father would do, Bennett reportedly replied saying, I don't know because, quote, I'm not a good father. The coroner has told police three-year-old Abigail Bennett died from blunt chest trauma due to assault with chronic physical abuse. More specifically, the autopsy showed the little girl had a ruptured heart, a contusion to one lung, and evidence of an old rib fracture. Abigail's dad, Justin Bennett, who was arrested for her murder, initially denied even been spanking his three daughters and said he found Abigail in her bed with a blanket wrapped around her neck and face Friday morning. Man, with all of that stuff going on and the mob just allowed it to happen for 18 months, I don't understand how a mother doesn't love her kids so much that you could just allow that to just happen like that. Let me give a shout out real quick to, uh, let me see, Jamaica Cassidy, who sent in a very, very nice $20 super chat. And Jamaica said, hello, AFC family. And I'd like to say hello to you, Jamaica. Thank you so much. Whenever you guys donate like that, man, I'm going to definitely stop what I'm doing and shout you guys out. So thank you so much for that. Camila Johnson sent in a super chat and she said, let me see. I would have been handing over the videotape on how I killed him for leniency for my sentencing. Yeah. It, but you know what? What's so funny? is the fact that even though this is a different nationality of a woman, the, it, it, I just think this, I don't know. It's, I think this is just a bad mother mentality where these mothers seem to care more about the man that they're screwing as opposed to the children that they create with that man. Hashtag babies for benefits. Mm-hmm. Seems to be a common theme. The mom did not give a shit about her kids Watch the kids be murdered, and she's going to get to go on with her happy little life. Man, that, that sucks, man. It really does. Pamela Trick is in a $5 super chat. Let me shout her out right there in the chat. Say, keep it up. Pamela, thank you so much, and I definitely appreciate you for co continuing to support us like that. So thank you so much. On a second interview, Bennett reportedly admitted that Abigail came into his room screaming and crying. The father said after about 10 minutes, he became upset and pressed one hand over her mouth and the other near the back of her neck. He said she stopped screaming. Police received the coroner's report after their second interview. At that time, they arrested Bennett in connection with his daughter's death, but the father refused another interview. Bennett had a brief court appearance in the case this morning and is expected back in court on Monday. Brian Callahan, 13 Action News. And just to let you guys know, Kid and Paul's put it in there. That is a terrible mom. She put in the Britney Big Belly Bowens emoji. Y'all know her out of Houston, Texas for causing the death of her daughter, right? That's why we got those emojis in there for our channel members. Matter of fact, let me give another shout out here to a channel member by the name of Tina Marie, who joined the AFC premiere, which is our top perk. And I want to say thank you so much and shout out, real big shout out to Tina Marie. Welcome to the AFC family in the building. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I just wanted the court and the defendant to listen, understand, and hear what the actions that was done by the defendant's hands to these little girls and what it did to all of our families involved. The defendant had done a good job of destroying my son's, daughter's, and fam my family's everyday routine and function in life into total chaos. By the defendant's way of taking care of my daughter and grandchildren with the actions that the defendant did has taken away from these girls all of the fun, joy, and happiness to experience being a child. And the defendant so proudly showed that by the fear instilled in them. To see that fearful look in their little eyes 
the girls were to obey and respond instantly to the defendant's orders or commands when given, or else, just like trained animals. Not to mention their emotional state of mind and hearts and the condition during that time in their life to live in fear all the time by this defendant. I can only imagine what kind of life they had in going to what they thought to be a home that should have been safe to grow up and enjoy childhood in, a place that only the defendant called a home. But for my grandchildren, the only thing that was there for them was the fear of cold showers for wetting their pants and being forced to eat a hot pepper. It's been very long. Three years. Seven months. Seven months. Six months. I'm getting through this one. Which? It's a little bit hard to hear, but that's the grandmother right there. That's Bernadine Morimoto. That's the grandmother. There's lots of tears, lots of crying, lots of anger and frustration. I love the process. He stole Abigail's life. He stole her from her mother, her sisters, her grandparents, her titis and cocos, her cousins. They stole her for being able to grow up with her sisters. The school she can go to. He can no longer go. He stole her friends she would make. Now they can't go to the prom, graduate. If you have it within your power, Your Honor, he deserves to stay in prison longer. Life sentence. That was agreed upon here. Uh, you violated the most sacred trust a father can have on the children. She won't get to laugh, hug, cry, nor get feelings of security. She's alone in a grave overlooking the Karen International Airport because she still loves him with that airplane. Mm, wow. And again, I want to make sure and put the focus where it needs to be. This baby right here, as well as her siblings, they deserve to have parents that actually cared about them, that protected them and guided them. And all they got was just people who cared so much about each other that they didn't even care about the lives that they produced together. These two jackasses, and I'm gonna make sure I get you their names again. Justin Tom Bennett, 26 years old. The biological mother's name is, hold on, go back. I'm gonna make sure y'all get her name. On the right hand side, Corey, K-O-R-I-E, Morimoto, M-O-R-I-M-O-T-O. terrible ass parents and I'll tell you guys when you look at this it looks like they're a happy family and you would hope that they would actually be a happy family but sometimes beyond those once that door closes and beyond those four walls you really don't know what the hell is actually going on and that's really why you have to be careful what woman you choose to have children by and that's also why you have to be careful ladies what man you choose this dude is unequivocally a fucking thug. He's not a drill instructor. He's a bitch. He's a coward, and he's definitely not a damn father. He is a horrible person, but guess what? So is the mom. Somebody said this was out in Las Vegas or nearby Las Vegas. So for anybody who knows that mom, she should be shunned. She should not be accepted in the society. She should not be, she should not be around any more kids, nor should she be allowed to have any more kids. She has proven the fact that she is willing to watch her children die. And I honestly hope that the grandparents never let her see those kids again, because clearly DHS or DCFS or whatever child CPS, child protective services is not doing their job. So we can't just rely on the fact that yeah, they're not going to let these kids go see the mom. 
Because ultimately, if the grandparents wanted her to see them, then they will let her see them. And I hope that they don't. So now the responsibility is going to be on the grandparents. Let me give a shout out real quick to Courtney Jackson, who sent in a very, very nice super chat. Let me read what she wrote. Okay. I'm going to put some respect on her name. She sent in $20 and she said, keep up the good work. We really need, we are really needing to advocate for our babies now that we are in sheltering in place. I live in Texas, which I do too. And the number of child abuse cases have increased since children are being homeschooled. Wow. Thank you for your message, Courtney Jackson, and shout out to all my people in Texas. We're going to get through this and it's got to get better. And we cannot just sit and allow for these type of things to continue to happen. So again, if you see something, please say something. The National Child Abuse Hotline, let me see, where did she put it? It's out there and it's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 800 for a child or 800-422-4453. If you don't know the number, Google it. Real easy. Google it. These two people don't need necessarily life in prison. They deserve death for what they did. I would love to see them put on an experimental rocket ship and launch their ass into outer space. Put them on the space program. Send them to NASA. Let them test on them. Send them to space and let's see how well that they do or how quickly they can survive without any atmosphere. Oh, I'd love to see a videotape of that. Just watch the life just instantly leave the mother and the father's bodies for what they did to those precious innocent kids who could not speak for themselves and could not defend themselves in no shape, form or fashion. And there were three of those children that suffered. Not only that this baby that you see on my screen pay the ultimate price, but even now her siblings are having nightmares and Lord knows if they're going to be able to recover from this. And I hope and pray that they do. And I hope and pray that the grandparents do what's best by them and never allow that mother to see them kids again. Cause it doesn't sound like she's going to get, get any jail time, a slap on the wrist. Ain't that some shit. All right. That's how we're going to close the story out. I'm going to say RIP to that baby, Abigail Bennett to the father. Boy, I hope they, I hope they do something terrible to him in prison. I'd love to get a report on that. Jay, you ain't gonna believe what happened to this dude in prison. I'd love to hear that. To this innocent soul, to this baby, RIP, Abigail Bennett, to your siblings, we pray and, and hope that you guys grow up to become something great, okay? This is your boy, DJ Just Jay. We're the AFC, where we advocate for children first. That is where our priority is. That is what all of our priority is. Shout out to all of our channel members. Shout out to all of our supporters and people on Patreon and everybody who continues to donate when you can find it in your budget. Please make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. Click that thumbs up. Leave a comment and let me know what you guys think, okay? From my heart to yours, I love you guys. Thank you so guys. Thank you so guys.